My friends, I hope you read the Bible readings in the last slide and notice that second reading especially, what the first line of that reading was. It says, rejoice always. Again, I will say rejoice. Now, if you haven't watched them, please go back and watch the last two weeks of these videos, okay? From November 29th and December 5th. Watch those because it's Advent season and that's four weeks long. And so the first one um, on November 29th, first Sunday of Advent, I showed you a candle setup thing for Advent to, to observe the season of Advent. And the idea is that you have uh, purple or blue candles, three of them, plus one pink one and then a white one. And of course the white one is the Christ candle, represents Jesus coming into our world, which is what Advent's all about, preparing for him, well, for us to celebrate his birth and then also now preparing for him to return. So the white one's the Christ candle. The pink one is actually the third candle. So this Sunday's candle, it's pink. The other three are purple or blue. Um, so anyway, watch those other two videos if you have it. Now, if you have, you may remember that in week one, I had this candle thing that I showed you. And then the second week, I didn't even have it up because the week kind of got crazy and busy and nuts and everything. So I wasn't even prepared to do that in last week's video. Uh, but I want to show you that I have it ready for today, for week three, okay? And uh, you'll notice, I don't know if you can see them real well on the camera, but I got three purple ones here. Okay, and then at the end here, Christ candle in the middle. And then here's this pink one. Now, I told you the first week in that video that I wasn't ready for Advent. I didn't have the candles. In fact, I, what did I have, like one candle that was it? And I don't think it was even the right color. I think it was just the white one or something. Um, again, go back and watch those. See, see what I was doing there. But now I got it, okay? I've got three purples and a pink. The problem is... <laughs> that my pink one here doesn't match, obviously, these other ones. These are, are made to fit this display. And so uh, you'll notice there's like a mirror effect. You'll, you'll, you saw it when I had the opening screen. You'll see it in the prayers because I'll focus on this for the prayers. Uh, anyway, it has, th those candles are supposed to be in here, so it has that, that, um, that reproduces, multiplies the light, okay, from the candles. Um, this one, however, is way above, sorry, this one is way above the thing. See, you don't get that effect with this one. Um, the reason I have this big pink one here is that's the only size I could find. Yeah, I actually went out shopping this last week to get candles for this display and I couldn't find a pink one in the votive size. So the only one I could find was this big huge thing right here. And obviously it's way above the rest of it. And I even had to, to put like some paper towels and stuff here to get it to stay in the stand because the base is thinner than the holder here. And so, yeah, this is sort of just, uh, um, this is what I got, so this is what you're getting in, in the video here. And, um, and the, on the one hand, I kind of am embarrassed that I don't have all my gear, you know, together here for you for these videos. But then I thought about it, that maybe this one being bigger than the other th weeks, maybe it's appropriate. Because the, the theme for this week is joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice, just like from our reading today. Yeah, the theme is joy. And the truth is that maybe this is how we should be with our joy. You know what I mean? That is, we should be living in such a way that people see in us the joy of salvation, the joy of the Lord. They should see in us the joy that comes from knowing we're forgiven, that we're saved, that we have eternal life with God forever. It should be bigger. Our joy should be bigger than our circumstances, especially if they're not great, especially, in fact, if they're sad or even tragic. Now, many of you, I'm sure, know what I'm talking about, this idea of having tough circumstances that you're living through. Maybe you're going through it right now. You're in sorrow and grief over the loss of loved ones. Maybe the holidays are just brutal for you because of work or family issues or whatever. Maybe you're dealing with illness. Uh, maybe, well, whatever it is, you know there's so many different ways that life tries to suck the joy out of us, huh? But the thing is, for we who are in Christ, it can't take away our joy because it cannot take us away from Christ. 
Again, God's promise, he holds us in the palm of his hand, a uh, palm of his hand, and nothing can snatch us away from him. Because of that, we can have joy. In fact, we do have joy. It's whether or not really that we're, well, enjoying it, that we're showing it, that we're experiencing it. And don't misunderstand, I'm not talking about the idea of being cheerful and happy all the time. Um, probably that's a little annoying in some ways for a lot of people. But I am talking about living with the calm assurance that God has you. Living with the knowledge and the peace that nothing is bigger than the God who has you. Living with the truth that even as we face the worst of circumstances, even in the face of death, we have the Lord of life, the Lord who conquered death. And because of that, we have joy in all things. So again, I'm not talking about being happy and cheerful all the time, although it is certainly fun, isn't it, to be happier rather than being sad? But I am talking about exhibiting the truth that the circumstances we deal with are not too big for our God. They might be too big for us, and really a lot of them are, but they're not too big for our God, the one who holds us in the palm of his hand, his loving hands. And because of that, we can exhibit the joy that Paul talks about. Paul, who's suffering through things and still says, rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. It seems almost impossible. It might even seem silly in the face of grief and sorrow and pain and suffering and illness and sadness and all the rest. It might seem silly to talk about joy, but for those of us who are in Christ, that is exactly the time to talk about joy, to experience joy. Because that, when we're at our worst, is when God's love comes through the most. That's when we can live in the knowledge that we're, we're his, and it's not going to change. That he loves us no matter what, and that we will be with him forever because of what he has done. And that, my friends, brings us joy. Joy is more than just happiness. Happiness, frankly, is, is an emotion that can go up and down with the body chemistry, okay? Uh, they say if you eat chocolate, it releases some hormone, you know, chemical, whatever, in your body that makes you feel better. Um, that's how fleeting and fickle happiness can be in our lives. But joy, true joy, joy of the Lord, that's there in all things. It doesn't mean that we're doing cartwheels and, and uh, jumping up and down, dancing and happiness all the time, but it does mean that we know, even in the face of the worst of things, we have a God who loves us the most, bigger than anything this world can throw at us. So as you go through this season, let your joy be bigger than the circumstances around you. Let people see the joy of the Lord in you. Give them words of encouragement and kindness. Help them when they're down. Pray for them and pray for yourself, for your own heart. Your God loves to hear from you. Let him know what's going on in your life, in your spirit, and share with him your griefs and sorrows, your successes and victories, and know that he loves you. And because of that, you do have joy. So go ahead, let it show. Let it be bigger than all the rest that's going on and celebrate that each day. Enjoy these days ahead, my friends. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting, amen. My friends, thank you so much for joining me for this time. I hope that you know joy in your life, that you acknowledge the fact every day that you are forgiven, beloved child of God because of Jesus, and that because of that, you can have joy. Let your joy show. Celebrate what God has given you. And remember, you are loved. Rejoice always.